Hey guys, so today's video is going to be of the highly technical variety where I talk about desktop operating systems, more specifically the ones which reside within the realm of Linux and the little intricacies there within. This video might sound boring to some people and if you feel you are some such person then rather than forcing yourself to watch through this video might I suggest that you check out yesterday's video which I uploaded on this channel which involves me playing through the first section of the very excellent and popular flash game Crush the Castle 2. The game itself is actually free to play on Armour Games. Have a check out my video and see if you can do better yourselves um, because yeah it's a game worth playing. But for those of you who are enthusiastic about desktop operating systems strap yourself in for a mildly interesting video. Okay so I have a computer. I use my computer for work and that computer that I use for work has two hard disk drives on it. One terabyte hard disk drive for my Windows 7 partition and one terabyte disk drive for my Linux Mint 15 partition. And today I'm going to be talking about why I'm ditching Linux Mint 15 in favour of Ubuntu. Now this is a decision that I've not taken lightly and I've got to say I haven't actually finalised yet. But there is one thing about Linux Mint which is kind of pushing me in the direction of Ubuntu and that is upgrading. So uh, if you are familiar with Linux Mint you will know that when you install Linux Mint it really wants to be installed as one big partition similar almost identical to how Windows installs and when you upgrade Linux Mint, it kind of almost demands that you wipe that partition clean and then reinstall the latest version of Linux Mint every six months, a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, and that, to me, that doesn't seem like a great way of upgrading a system, particularly if you've got a lot of documents, maybe even some Steam games on there. And to do that every so often just is a big hassle. Now, I understand why they're doing it. They're doing it because upgrading a system at times can be unstable, but um, if it does turn out to be unstable then you can wipe your hard disk drive and start again and if you are smart enough you will have uh, separated your, your home and your root partition so that you wouldn't even have lost your documents or wouldn't have to resort to backing up because of course boys and girls we back up everything these days and you know rightfully so. So um, that was really it. I mean, I am planning out how my computer system's going to look for the next couple of years. And like I say, I can't really afford to have an out-of-date system. I can't afford to have an insecure system. And I also can't afford to have an unstable system, which kind of rules out me having any kind of rolling distribution as well. Rolling distributions really aren't mission critical. They're not something you can rely on in the same way that a scheduled release operating system is. So... I have decided that Ubuntu is easy, easy enough and reliable enough to upgrade as you go with its built-in features and so forth and of course you don't really lose any functionality over Linux Mint. Yes you might have to you know tweak a few more bells and whistles to get what you want but uh, ultimately the end result is going to be the same. Now Linux Mint is, is, is great for a number of reasons. It has its own repositories and includes a fair number of uh, additional extras with it, uh, particularly in terms of things like codecs and also, uh, you know, little extras. I think it includes um, uh, Skype and things like that as well. Um, but the fact of the matter is, these are fringe benefits. They are uh, the result of the reason behind Linux Mint's genesis in the first place. Linux Mint is designed with well, almost casual Linux users in mind, users who don't really want to delve too far into the command line, people who might be migrating across from Windows, or people that just want everything to work out the box. And I've got to say, I'm kind of one of those people. Um, so, yeah, Linux Mint, it was very, very appealing to me, and it still is. I'm still, like, as an operating system, it's fantastic. But um, there are a few reasons, of course, besides the upgrading. I mean, Ubuntu is easier to upgrade. But um, Linux Mint and Ubuntu have very two, you know, two different approaches to how they look at their operating system. Linux Mint is, is, is of course, much more community driven. It has, um, you know, it, it responds to feedback from its community members and it will adjust its system accordingly. It's also a lot more conservative in its 
change in things like user interface. It likes to keep things consistent, and I really, really respect that. It's so easy for uh, UI designers to hop on, uh, hop on a you know a trendy bandwagon and 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 make everything look like it should be on a tablet. But you know, uh, Linux Mint it 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 stays a steady course, and that is very much to be respected. But it is a very community orientated desktop distribution. And I think Ubuntu has much more of a corporate edge. It's well aware of the corporate nature of the desktop um, uh, desktop operating system market. It's very aware how big a role money plays in it as well. The number of uh, Linux uh, open source projects I've seen get shelved because um, the money just can't keep it going uh, is 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 uh, is really quite sad in in a way. A lot of people's labour of love. Uh, is is often sort of you know put aside because they have to pay the bills at the end of the day, and it would be great if there was just more money in the open source community that could uh, mean that more people could be working full time on these kind of projects. But alas, having such a community orientated set of projects, um, it does tend to mean that it relies on labors of love, and labors of love run out of steam uh, if they don't have any real solid motivation, i.e. money. And Canical, which is the company which basically sponsors Ubuntu, uh, yeah, they understand this, and they understand that there needs to be some financial uh, foundations to keep uh, parts of the open source community stable. And it's not a Canical that invented this concept, of course. Red Hat have been doing it, Novell have been doing it, um, and there were companies before them, I'm sure. Um, but I think it is, and I think there is a big problem in the open source community in terms of its its lack of money, which can often lead to an unstable, you know, climate of software, um, and it can lead to things getting shelved, and it could lead to people losing interest in various kinds of things because, you know, if you're relying on your sheer enthusiasm to push a project forward, when that enthusiasm runs out, that project no longer moves forward, whereas money can get things done as well. So, uh, yeah, like I say, I think Canical kind of respects this, and I kind of like the fact that they are uh, kind of got their head in the game when it comes to money in open source. Um, and uh, and I kind of think that, um, as well, it, it just, uh, you know, I, I yeah, I, I think that's about it, really. I mean, Linux Mint is a derivative of, uh, of Ubuntu, so they're not going to be that different. And who knows that, you know, maybe in six months' time I might go back to Linux Mint. Maybe I might see the light. Maybe Linux Mint might be, um, might be the operating system for me after all. But then again, there might be something in Ubuntu that makes my life a little bit easier. Maybe uh, there might be, you know, some more uh, paid support, for example, that I could benefit from as well. There might be some more advantages for me using it professionally rather than Linux Mint, which does seem to be, like I say, a more community-oriented uh, distribution. So guys, please let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Do you prefer Ubuntu? Do you prefer Linux Mint? Or are you a fan of something else completely different altogether? Let me know down in the comment section below. That's about it for me today. Thank you very, very, very much for watching. And uh, if you are not at all interested in Linux desktop operating systems or the like and have made it this far into the video, well done. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. I've been Chris Ware. You've been awesome.